I wanted to talk for a few minutes about motifs in Bionicle. What is a motif? Well, it is essentially when a character takes inspiration from something else and utilizes it as a part of that character. A perfect example of this is nearly all of 2007 Bionicle, where instead of the characters having sort of like an elemental look, actually were inspired a lot by underwater creatures, right? Characters like Prydak being inspired by a shark. And on first glance, you might look at the set and say, that's supposed to be a shark. But if you actually look at something like the weapon from that set, for example, this is a shark, like 100%. Yeah, it's streamlined, sure, and it doesn't exactly have the shark tail, but when you actually look at it, you can kind of see the eye. Here you can see that back dorsal fin, and it starts to come together, and you go, oh yeah, that's actually pretty clever, and it's still a very good looking weapon. This is my example of a motif done right, in the sense that you know exactly what it is when you see it, but it's very easy to just see this as a very elegant blade at the same time, which is what it looks like to me. It's why I love this weapon as much as I do. But there's another character that actually has a motif, and I don't think it's handled terribly well. If I were to ask you which of your 2009 Glatorian Legend sets was the least favorite, why would it be Vastus? <laughs> I actually think that if I asked a crowd that, um, if they were familiar with it, like 9 out of 10 people would pick Vastus as their least favorite. And I can kind of see why. He's a bit of a clunky character. He does have some interesting concepts, but concepts being interesting doesn't mean the execution is. And this idea here with the knee pad on the stomach is, well, it works. Not a great use of that piece. I would have liked to have seen maybe one of the Baraki armor pieces recolored here in that dark green color. And of course, on top of that, this character has a motif as well. It's most obvious, of course, on the helmet here with the snake head right there, front and center, but also on the shoulders with the twin snakes. And though that's a cool concept, the slightly asymmetric heads does bother me, but we can ignore that here for a minute. However, it's also carried over on the weapon here as well, being that there's actually a snake head here. This is where things start to bother me, because that implies that this is the fang of this snake-like build, this snake weapon. I don't imagine that this is a snake in the story. I imagine that this is some character who took inspiration from a snake like Rahi or Animal, whatever the case on Barra Magna, right, and just decided to make their scythe based on that animal. So it has these comically large fangs, but at the same time, it's too small to feel like a good scythe, and not to mention... We don't see a lot of Anika builds with staff type weapons, and rightfully so, because they're really clunky on Anika builds. Anika builds are very good at doing a lot of things, but stabs are not one of them. When you're holding a two-handed weapon, the arms are often just brought way too close together, and there's not a lot you can do about it other than using larger axles, which this set should have included. But larger axles can often mean like the box has to get larger. It can cause other problems, of course. So I have to ask myself, well, why bother with this then? There are a couple of gripes that I have with it, of course. If I were going to change this set, first of all, I would add just two sides. Why just one? You know, give it two. There's no reason not to. And on top of that, just make it longer so it feels like a more dangerous weapon, a more capable weapon. But also, of course, the shoulder pads, as I mentioned, and the helmet here. The helmet is very cool looking, especially for a green character. I think it could very easily be recolored dark blue as well and used for water. But the large side horns here can get to be a little bit cumbersome and clunky on certain types of builds. I would have personally preferred if LEGO had actually had just some little holes in the side that you could attach what you wanted to, and then they could have come up with a separate mold for those horns to stick out of the side, whatever the case. But the thing is, these are not actually the only pieces that LEGO gave us with a snake motif. Sort of. You see, I've actually been building a bit of a project in the past. It utilized this piece. This is from Gresh Stars, who traditionally does not have a snake motif, but they did give this piece some interesting details. It's unfortunately only available in this lime green color, but it actually has scales on it and fangs on it. And that's really cool because although this is armor first and foremost it can fit onto other pieces quite nicely avmatoran limbs for example it fits on certain versions of those very well the vaki type of avmatoran limb very well on the back side of it but also it works great as little like fist punching claw weapons you know it's a neat piece 
But seeing those scales there, seeing the little fangs there, it makes me think, well, what happens if they had added that to Vastus instead? We're going to go ahead and take a look at that really quick. Now, the thing is, it's still a pretty small armor piece overall, so if they were going to add it, it's not going to be as large as armoring as something like the snake shoulder pads that we got. But had it been added maybe to the torso or something, it would have been cool to have seen. Of course, it would have taken some of the speciality away from Gresh Stars. But I think that Gresh Stars overall does carry himself pretty well. As a star set, he's definitely one of the better ones coming with a brand new recolor of torso, recolor of helmet, recolor of weapons, and recolor, well, not even just a recolor, brand new armor piece that was exclusive to him. And a recolor of the foot too. Mm. The project I ended up using this on, which is not finished, and it's for kind of a secret project uh, here, is actually this snake giant Rahi. Um, I don't know if I want to get too into detail as to what this is for, but I think I'll hint at it a little bit here. A while ago, uh, I actually saw a piece of concept art that was drawn for a contest, and the artist was Pokora Morgan, which has actually been on the channel, so you should check out the interview with them, which I believe was last month. Don't quote me on that, though. With that said, though, they had actually drawn a piece of art for this contest, and in the background of this art, they had put some, like, flying whale-like things. I don't know if that's exactly what they are because I'm trying to work from memory here, but suffice to say, it inspired me to make something like it. And so I decided to make this really cool-looking whale, which I have made. You can find it on my Discord on my Instagram. I don't have it for the channel yet, but I do plan on doing a review of it in the future. But this kind of spurred this idea for me to actually do something that I hadn't really considered before. And it sort of reignited my love for Barra Magna as it stands in terms of it being a brand new and sort of blank canvas of a world. Yes, there are things that Lego filled in haphazardly after Bionicle was canceled. Whatever, we can ignore some of that. We have the power. <laughs> but it did inspire me to do something else. You see, to me, at least in my head canon, ignoring Lego for just a handful of minutes, to me, there are nine tribes on Barra Magna, which is also why I am making nine Glatorian sets like the Israkoth character back there, the yellow dragon-like character. But the reason I chose nine was so that each of these elements could have a village with representation. That doesn't necessarily mean that these villages are all still around. And also, apologies, this takes place after the Reformation. So my thought is, what if after the Sky Pirates, right? Here's the thing. I don't want to ignore all of what we learned about Barra Magna. Rather, there are certain things that we know. I'm not going to treat the characters as organic. I think that's a weird cop-out. The pieces are Bionicle pieces anyway, so I'll just ignore that. To me, they're just going to be Bionicles. But the difference between Glatorian and Toa in my headcanon, is going to be that the Glatorian do not have elemental powers. Yet, there's a reason for this. So as you can see back there, alongside Israkoth, the yellow dragon that I have a hard time pointing at, you'll see a white tall guy. <laughs> that is one of the elemental lords that I designed, the ice elemental. I don't have a name for him yet. I'm sure that they have names in the story, and that that's fine. But I had a thought. Why are there elemental lords on this planet, or, or at least in this area, if there aren't elements, at least not elements wielded by the Glatorian? And so my thought was, what if these characters are not evil, per se, but they're not good either? Rather, they're just these entities that have existed for, who knows how long, all of time, for all that matters, for eternity, right? And they are the sort of embodiment of their elements, but they also have to consume that element, if that makes sense, right? And so my idea is that because we don't ever really see the elementals, at least not like during Bionicles run, and obviously we never see any elemental sets, of course, we see them in some of the comics showing up. But my thought was this, what if the elementals have basically siphoned nearly all of the energy from what's left of Barra Magna, rendering it as the Baron's planet that it would become, right? This is after the planets were split apart, so they basically just took everything from Barra Magna, but because they were locked on Barra Magna and couldn't go elsewhere, they couldn't go to siphon all the energy from Aqua Magna or, or 
uh, from Boat to Magna or anything like that. So Bar Magna turns into this desert planet. Essentially, there are, you know, still oases and little spots here and there where there's still some life, some semblance of civilization, if nothing else. But for the most part, the planet is barren. Again, still all headcanon completely. And so my thought is that after the elemental siphoned as much energy as they could basically find, they just kind of went dormant. And so the idea is that after the Reformation, after the planets are all brought back together, that new energy from Aqua Magna, from Bota Magna, essentially the, the elementals sense that and that reawakens them. So they are going to act as the antagonists, if you will, for my 2011 storyline. That's the idea. But that's not all. This is going to get difficult. There are nine elementals, at least in my story, and the elementals have a counterpart. Each elemental also has an elemental beast. So you get the elemental lord and the elemental beast. That is 18 titan sets. That's a lot. Obviously, this is not something that LEGO would do. So this is not going to play to the same effect as the project I've been working on right now. Which, if you don't know, it, I'm treating it as though LEGO was making this product. Essentially, the Bara Magna expansion project is nine Glatorian as if LEGO released them, nine Agori as if LEGO released them, nine vehicle slash dinosaur builds. There's that's a put an asterisk by that as if LEGO built them. And then, of course, the dragon, the big bad for the year. 2011, though, that's where I have a lot more freedom because a lot of my effort is going to go into these elementals as characters and into these elemental beasts. The idea is that basically the first half of the year would get the elementals, the second half would get the elemental beasts. I don't know what I'm going to do for Glatorian for that year if I'm going to have them at all. Maybe I'll have, you know, one or two, of course, floating around, but that's not my focus for 2011. My main focus is going into the big guys here. So it's a big project. I don't know. I don't have a time frame for any of this stuff. For, it's, it's a lot to take in. And I still, I don't have it all thought out yet. Again, I am not someone who is like die hard deep into Bionicle lore, especially not Bar Magna or anything like that. So there's a lot of stuff that I miss and I'm okay with that. I don't need to be some walking library encyclopedia of Bionicle knowledge to enjoy this concept. Does that make sense? So I think it's a really fun idea either way. With that said, though, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because it does really help out the channel. And of course, as always, you can join the conversation in the comments, Discord, Instagram, and Patreon. If you want to support channel and get some perks, we'll be in the description below, and I will see you all in the next one.